Welcome to the second part of the inspecting a used van to convert into a camper van series. If you haven't seen part one, which is kind of the outside checks, then go and check that out up there first. In this video, we're gonna go over all the mechanical checks and electrical checks that you need to go through on a van. Like we said, the mechanical or the engine, the heart of your van is just as important as the bodywork and the interior. So in part one, I went over a few tools that you need. So this is where most of them will come in action. A torch, an OBD2 scanner to check the computer of the car, some paper towels to check all levels and engine and oil and that sort of thing. And then obviously the most important thing that you'll need is a notebook and pencil and our trusty checklist that will go through everything that I'm about to explain to you and have tick boxes and space ready for you to write any problems or little nags or anything little different and tick things off so you don't miss anything. So with that in order, let's check the engine of the van. So the first thing that you'll want to do when you open up the bonnet of the van is just have a look at the engine. Like you did when you first came and saw the van and looked around the outside, just come in and have a look at the condition of the engine. It will be dirty, it will be dusty because it's an engine and it's diesel, but if it's excessively dirty, like there's oil or there's very thick, like this one has, you can see, dust on my fingers, but if it is caked, if your hand is dripping in unknown substances, that's not a good sign. So I would just run, run away. The other thing is, which may seem counterintuitive, if it is too clean, it might be hiding something. People don't generally clean their engine bays pristine. Usually an engine looks used. So if it is dead clean, they may be trying to hide something. So if that all seems in check, then the next thing that you'll be wanting to check are the levels. So there are a lot of little containers and such with caps in engines that contain different sort of fluids. So with all of these levels, obviously make sure you check them whilst the van is on a flat and level surface. Do not do it on a hill, otherwise you'll get wonky readings. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is this one. The blue one, it'll have this symbol on the top. This is the windscreen washer fluids. So this one is actually deep down in the engine but you'll see there's a blue liquid inside. It should be filled up pretty much to the top. Now, this is not a vital part of your engine running, obviously. If there's not a lot in there, then you can top it up. It's not expensive, but that kind of gives you an indication of how well they're maintaining it. If it's not filled up, why is it not filled up? It's an MOT failure if you don't have any in because you can't clean your windscreen. So it's just general checks like this to make sure that they're keeping up to date with the health of the van. The next one here is this green one. This is the power steering fluid. This basically makes the steering in vans lighter so that you can turn corners easier when the engine is on. So you, what you want to do for this one, you want your paper towel. What you do, it will untwist. And now on the end of this one, this engine is cold, so it will be at about 20 degrees and the fluid level is at the correct level. And you just want to wipe it on the tissue. You don't want any oil, like black oil in there. You don't want any metal flakes. You don't want anything that looks like it shouldn't be in there. It should be like an oil that you pour to cook with. And then you'll want to check inside the actual reservoir itself. Make sure again that there's nothing that there shouldn't be. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see, but you'll get the gist of it, especially around the rim, if there's anything in there that shouldn't be. The next fluid that you'll want to check, and it will have a symbol on top like this, is the coolant. So this is the stuff that runs around the engine and takes the heat away from the engine and, you know, stops your engine from overheating. So it's quite a vital part of your engine and you'll want to make sure that you have fluid. So if you open it up, what you'll do is you'll look inside and it will be a brightly colored fluid. Usually it's green or orange or pink or red or I don't know, any other bright color, but it should be a bright color and it should have, again, no oil, no flakes, no plastic, no anything else in there apart from pure coolant. So if that's all fine, you want to check the level of it. There'll be a minimum and a maximum symbol and you'll see the fluid, our fluid is just below the maximum, which is pretty much perfect of where it needs to be. Obviously, if it's minimum, therefore there might either be a leak or they may not have topped it up, which means the engine could be running hot and that can damage other things. One of the other reservoirs is it will have a nice big warning sticker on because it's not a nice fluid to deal with is brake fluid. So this is the stuff that when you press the brake pedal, this is the stuff that compresses and causes your brake pads to clamp on to the brake discs and makes you stop. So give this an open. Now this one, our one is topped right up to the full. So you can actually see some brake fluid in there. It's kind of this horrible greeny, yellowy 
toxic looking liquid and, it's, and it smells quite awful it smells like vinegar and bathroom cleaner and sealant oh no it's worse than bogus it's vomit again this has to be topped up all the way on the side it's kind of hard to see on ours but you can see the minimum <laughs> so there's the minimum line ours is topped up all the way to full so as long as that's good that's fine and the final fluid that you'll want to check and this is the most important fluid because it is literally the blood of your engine and that's the oil now don't worry if the oil looks a bit dirty around the oil pan it usually does but this here black cap it will have like an oil can on it you open it up so you want to check the underneath of the cap and there should be a nice black oil color you can get your tissue and wipe it and you'll see see it's this greeny black there should be no metal flakes there should be no sludginess um, actually something that's very important here if you kind of get this like white creamy build up that could mean that your pistons are wearing out it could mean that your oil seals are going it could mean that your pistons are misaligned which means that they're misfiring that is a big deal so that gives you an idea of what kind of oil is in your engine and whether it looks healthy oil and then the other thing you want to check is the level of your oil now usually it will be a yellow stick like this with a, a loophole and this is called your dipstick and this will tell you how much oil you've got in your engine so you pull it all the way out sometimes quite a long stick and then with your tissue just give it a wipe down at the end and then you'll dip it back in to where you put took it out from and then you'll pull it back out and now at the end of your dipstick there should be some sort of indicator on ours there's a hashed line on that flat bit that shows you the minimum and the maximum and as you can see the oil is above the maximum but not too far so that means that the oil in this van is topped up to full mm -hmm. if there is no oil so that you've wiped it clean you put it back all the way down and you take it out and there's no oil in the end of the dipstick i would run because if there's no oil in that engine or very little oil it means that your engine can seize up well imagine if you didn't have any blood how long would you last not very long so after you've checked all the liquids that you can access the next thing to check for is whether they are leaking or not you want to spend about 20 percent of your time looking for leaks above the vehicle so you just grab your torch put it on full setting and just have a look around see if you can see any wet patches anything like oil will dry out and it will be black and caked on so just kind of have a look underneath all where the reservoirs are see if there's anything dripping down if anything's got a drip on or anything's wet so just kind of have a poke around poke your head in and see move pipes out of the way if you need to like this everything in this van looks dry but leaks drip downwards so 80 percent of your time looking for leaks should be spent under the vehicle okay so welcome to the underneath of this crafter what you want to do kind of try and locate where those uh liquid reservoirs were on the top of the van but you'll see because liquids just drip everywhere when they leak so just have a look around especially for things like down running pipes like this there'll be a leak if there were a leak it will be dripping down here and one of the most important things you want to check is this thing here so this thing here is the oil reservoir so when they change the oil in your van they unbolt this and all the oil drains out now there might be a little as you can see there's a bit of black here so this is probably residual oil from when they did the last oil change and such there might be some dried on oil in and around this area but if there is new fresh oil dripping down either leaking from this plug or leaking from further up there in the engine bay then that could be a problem oil leaks can be caused from anything from i guess loosey loose or uh worn out bearings and worn out seals which could be an easy fix or it could be something as severe as your engine is dying which is just not a good thing is it that's the coolant look you can see it see the color yeah there you go you can see the color a lot better up down here that's it, the coolant reservoir it is good when you're under keep the bonnet open because that gives you more light and as you can see that you can see the color very clearly so you can orient it yourself check for anything that doesn't look quite right as you can see the engine looks used and quite a lot of this engine even though this engine's only five years old you see a little rust patch here see it's gone rusty here some of this metal looks a rusty color and such that's not too much of a problem rust will obviously happen all under the vehicle don't worry about slight rust like that in the engine also a good thing to check is like you can see the fan here quite quite well yeah uh, check that it's not broken 
Yeah, so check, you can actually spin it whilst the engine's off. So check all these fan blades are in place because this is what runs your air conditioning and cools down your coolant so that it can keep circulating in your engine. The other thing that you want to check whilst you're under because you're able to see it are these. These are timing belts, cam belts, whatever, uh, depends on the make and model of your vehicle, but the belts should look reasonably new. They should have a slight spring to it when you press it, but it should be quite firm. And the one thing that you don't want to see is nice shiny insides. So when these start to wear out, the edges and this bit will start wearing out and you'll see nice shiny sort of aluminium colour, you know, bright white metal. Now whilst you're under the van, it's quite hard to see from above, but you'll be wanting to check this lovely giant chunk of metal. Now this thing will save your life in a crash. That's exactly what it's designed for. If you have a head-on collision with another car, this thing crumples up and protects you from the inside. Now, obviously, it depends whether the vehicle has been in a crash or not. Sometimes owners say, sometimes they do not. If this thing looks nice and straight, it looks factory, it may have a little rust, but that's not too much of a problem. So if any of those are damaged, that could mean there's serious structural support problems with the vehicle. Even if they haven't reported it, next time they take it in for a service, they might spot it. <laughs> So once you're done with all of that under the van, you're done with the engine. If everything works out, then move on to the other parts. So the next thing that you want to check are the tyres, the brakes, the wheels, general condition like that, and you'll be able to see the suspension as well. So on this one, this has got actually proper van tyres, which is wonderful. But what you want to check on the tyres, so first of all, you want to just have a look over it and make sure that it looks inflated, everything seems okay with it. On all tires, there should be some sort of mark. On this one, it's right there. And this mark is basically if the entire tire is down to that level, that means that it is illegal to drive on it and you need to replace it now. If it's getting close to that level, that means you're gonna need to replace your tires very soon. And if you live somewhere where it's off-roading or there's a lot of snow and stuff, replace it sooner than that. Um, so you want to make sure that the tyres have some decent life left on them and if they don't then it's not a game changer but you have to note that a new tyre can cost anywhere from 150 to 250 pounds per tyre. So if you need four new tyres that may be nearer a thousand pounds that you need to add on to the price of the van or consider that that's how much it's going to cost you in the next year and you can use that to bargain. So check the tyres. The other thing that you want to do on the tyres is check whether the tr the uh, the wearness, so check whether they're wearing evenly. So put your finger in the back, and then put your finger in the middle, and then obviously put your finger in the front. And what you want to check for is whether they're the same depth in each of the grooves. And you want to run your fingers all the way down as much as you can reach. And you want to check for any bold patches. So this could mean they've braked suddenly and one part of the tire is locked up and it's worn out on the road, or if there's significant wear on one portion of the tire, that could mean that the alignment's out or that the wheel's not sitting exactly vertical, which could uh, cause problems for tire wearing and ball joint wearing and all of that. So make sure that the tires basically look like a normal tire. You're mostly gonna be going off feel for this bit. So there are two parts to a braking system. There's braking pads, which are the things that clamp on and then there's a braking disc, which is the thing in the middle that spins with the tyre. And when you clamp them on, they brake together and it stops the vehicle. So the thing that moves are the brake pads, which need to be replaced more often than the thing in the middle, which is called the brake disc. Now, these are not that expensive to buy, but they can be like an hour or two worth of labour uh, if you get someone else to do it. So that could be a couple of hundred pounds for a set of brake pads or brake discs. So yeah, this thing here is the brake disc discs. So these wear out less often than the brake pads. And what you want to check for this, like I said, it's mostly on feel, but first of all, you want to look at it, make sure it's not rusty, make sure there are not nice deep grooves in it. If there are deep grooves, it needs to be replaced. So the main thing you want to check on these brake discs are the top here. There'll be a rim or a ledge that you can uh, feel there. Now there should be a little bit of a lip, that's quite normal for brake discs, but if there is a lot of a lip, like here I can sort of catch my finger, you can see there's a little bit of resistance, but if you're like struggling to get it nice and smooth, that probably means that these discs are going to need to be replaced very soon. So the, yeah, 
generally check on this one and obviously all three other ones for the brake discs and then the other thing that you'll see now this is the very difficult part to see this here is the brake caliper and this holds the brake pads so these are the things that get replaced the most often so what you want to check with these brake pads is that there's enough thickness left for there to be sufficient braking force these ones are pretty much brand new so this gives you an idea of what a brand new set of brake pads looks like very worn out brake pads will pretty much look like there's no material left and that metal clamp holding it in will be the one that's rubbing against the brake discs which is a situation that you never ever want to have and front brakes wear out much quicker than back brakes so you want to do this with all four wheels so now what you want to do is go to the back of the vehicle and check underneath here because if the vehicle has had a rear-on collision you know remember i said earlier about it having a head-on collision if it's had a rear collision those same shock absorbers that will be under the back will also be crumpled so we're going to check under here with a big torch. So this long piece of metal that runs all the way nice and straight and it actually runs very very far down the van but this piece of metal is the rear shock absorber and uh, if you've had a rear collision this will be crumpled. Quite often the back of the van will be uh, covered in mud as this one is. You just want to kind of have a general look around. There shouldn't be any leaks at this end of the van. Um, this big block thing there that I'm shining the torch on that is the um, thing that drives the rear wheels if your van is four wheel drive so you want to make sure that's not leaking because that has fluid in it oh my god there's a spider yeah i had one uh, on, on, right next to my nose <sighs> so that's pretty much the general check that you want to do for the mechanics whilst you haven't started the engine when you start the engine there's a whole bunch more stuff to do so let's go and do that but before we turn on the engine we need to check the electronic computer central control system of the van. <laughs> We're gonna check the central computer system of the van with this OBD2 scanner. So this basically scans the entire computer system of the van and checks all electronical or other faults that the computer picks up that you couldn't normally tell by just looking at the vehicle. This is a cheap version of what the garage mechanics use. This is how the mechanics check and figure out problems with your vehicle. They use like two to 10,000 pound equivalents of this. I'll leave a link for this down in the description below if you did want to buy one for yourself, but this one is only about 20 pounds. So these sort of ports, they're found on all vehicles after 1999, I believe. It kind of looks like an old TV connection with lots of pins. Quite often these are located either under the driver's side, so kind of under there where the pedals are, um, but in the crafter, it is located under here. So under this bit, it's in there. So if we connect that up. And once it's connected up, the scanner will turn on. All we have to do is press enter to go to the menu. Then we want to run a diagnostics test. So we click the top one. So the first and most important thing that you want to do is something called read codes. So yeah, click on there, stored codes. So it says there's no code stored in this module, which is exactly what you want to see. There's nothing wrong, it hasn't found any problems. Then pending codes is anything that basically has been scanned before and someone's deleted off the computer system. And again, no pending codes. And then there are some other tests that you can do. There's a O2 monitor test, there's some live data, um, but basically the codes are the ones that you want to check. Okie dokie, so now it comes to the actual part of the time where you can start the engine. So yeah, like we said, up until this point, if anything's a red flag, if there's anything leaking or anything that you don't fancy, just say there's no point starting the engine and doing all these checks. But anyway, if everything's good up till now, now it's time to start the engine. So there are three things that you are going to check when you're starting the engine and I'll go over them each one in detail. So the first thing, you'll put the key in the ignition and you'll turn it. Uh, so you'll turn the ignition on, but not the engine. And you'll have a lot of lights pop up. They'll pop on and off, but don't worry about that. But the two lights that need to remain on, one is the handbrake light just there with a big P in the middle. And the other one will be this yellow one. It does need to be on whilst the ignition is on. So now it comes to starting the vehicle. So the first thing that we're going to check when we start the vehicle inside the cabin is that all the lights go off on the dashboard and then the rev needle stays constant. So let's give that a go. There we go. As you can see, well, the parking brake stays on, so that's fine. I haven't got my seatbelt on, so that's fine. But as you see, that yellow one on this here, 
has gone. So right. this is completely clear of any warning lights or anything like that, which is good. The other thing that you want to check, this is the rev needle. So this is how hard your engine is working essentially. And usually when you've got the engine on and just running, it stays about at the number one. As long as it stays around one, that's fine. It should stay constant and stay level. The second thing that you want to check is have someone start the car from the inside and you go to the front and check to see how the engine sits when it is started. What you don't want to see is it lurching and, you know, kind of going, Ooh! trying to start and it's not <laughs> when it is running the third thing that we're going to check and we are going to have to go under the vehicle for this is the exhaust a little bit of steam or smoke or something like that is fine but anything major like i think black smoke stands for like it's burning petrol inefficiency so you get a big blast of black smoke blue smoke means it's burning oil white smoke them can mean multiple stuff including if there's water leaking into your engine but basically no big puffs of colored smoke so after you've done those mechanical checks as you can see you do need a checklist here because there are a lot of stuff so literally just get it it's in the description just download it print it and take it with you after you've done all those checks you now need to leave the engine running and you need to let it warm up and again do all the leak checks that I mentioned at the beginning again because when the engine's running and when fluids are moving and everything like that that's when leaks can appear and if everything of all of that seems fine then it is time to take it on a test drive so that'll be next week's video so subscribe for that and until then we will see you probably under the van actually Go to our website for our new merch, join us on Patreon for exclusive discounts and content, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. And maybe hand in the air like you just do not care.